2010 for Dummies is like all my word books and all my Dummies books, it doesn't assume anything. It takes you from the beginning of knowing nothing to learning how to use the program. So if you already know how to use a word processor, you can use the book to look up those specific items that bother you, things that you need help with, things that you want to figure out doing, and that's, that's great. But if you've never used a word processor before, you've never used Microsoft Word before or a computer, you can get the book and it'll start you out. It tells you how to start the program, tells you how to type, how to use a keyboard, tells you how to create a document, save a document, print a document. All the basic stuff is still in there, so there's no real assumptions. And in fact, that basic stuff, while you know, you could say, oh, that's beginner stuff, I don't really know. I find a lot of people who actually read the entire book will read it and go, geez, I didn't know you could do that, or I didn't know that was an option or a feature. So there's always something that people can learn, from the beginner to someone who thinks they know it all. Even I will occasionally sit down and go, oh my gosh, I didn't know that, that the program could do that. And that's just one of the fun things about learning about computers. Word 2010 looks just like Word 2007 to the untrained eye, but after you've used it a while, you'll notice there are some subtle differences. But the biggest change people are going to notice is that the office button is gone, and in its place is something very logical called the file tab, which makes a lot more sense because it's one of the tabs that you have. You have the you know, file tab, and then you have the home tab, and the insert tab. So it's much more logical presentation of information. Printing in Office is no longer just sending something to the printer. It's now what I call publishing. In fact, in my book, the Word 2010 for Dummies, I changed the name of the printing chapter to publishing because that's what you're really doing. You can publish by printing something. You can publish by sending it as an email. You can publish by producing a PDF file. There's just, these are different ways that you take the document out of your computer and make it public. So it's not really printing anymore, it's publishing. The tools that I use the most often are styles. I create styles, and I think everyone should. Once you have the styles, you can take advantage of features in Word that let you easily access the styles, such as the Quick Style Gallery. And you, to modify the Quick Style Gallery, I tell you, it really saves a lot of time. When I write a book, all my favorite styles for the book that I'm using are right there, in, right there on the Home tab in that Quick Styles area, and it's so easy to just click it and to, uh, to summon up the styles. You can add your own autocorrect entries so that you can fix up your common typos. Um, you know, if you would always make the same type of, of spelling mistake everywhere, you can tell Word to automatically fix it. So if you're always typing T-E-H instead of the, Word will automatically, you just type that in and Word just will rearranges all the letters for you. There's a lot of great tricks in there and people, unfortunately, if they read the book, they'll learn the tricks. But otherwise, if you kind of muddle through, you're, you're going to miss out on some of these great features.